It's the greatest prize in sports entertainment, and it can be used to hold up your trousers. The WWE Championship dates back to the WWWF. It's decorated the waist of this industry's greatest talents, and also Sid. It's WWE's oldest current operating title, its most prestigious, the highest accolade in the biggest wrestling company in the world, the boyhood dream for so many aspiring wrestlers, or it should be. But it isn't. WWE have done some unbelievably dumbass things with its biggest belt, not least making it second fiddle to its younger twin brother with leather that looks ugly even if it's red or blue. Vince was champion once for some reason. JBL held it for an interminably long amount of time, ending Eddie Guerrero's only tight run on a bloody technicality. And it f***ing span for a time. And those aren't even bad enough to make this list. This is going to be rough. Here are the 10 worst mistakes WWE made with the WWE Championship. Number 10, never giving it to Hot Rod. So look, I'm not saying that you have to have won the WWE Championship to be considered a legend in this business. That's silly. There are so many amazing wrestlers with spotless legacies, even though they've never won the big one. Mr. Perfect, Jake the Snake, Rick Rude, Nathan Jones, they're all brilliant. But even so, man, they really should have put the belt on Roddy Piper at least once. Once. The man who doesn't get enough credit for being the main antagonist in the whole rock and wrestling pop culture explosion. The guy could talk, he could draw heat like no one else. His feud with Hogan and Mr. T was the linchpin of WrestleMania. It's not about Roddy Piper deserving a WWE Championship run, although he f***ing did. It was a huge missed business opportunity. If you're telling me you would rather pay to see a boxing match between Hot Rod and Mr. T rather than Hulk Hogan going against heel champion Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 2, then he might need to walk into the sea because your pants are on fire. Speaking of missed opportunities, number nine, not running Hogan Flair at WrestleMania 8. Look, I promise I'll stop ragging on Sid when I'm dead. And this is something I've complained about before, so I'll keep it brief. On July 7th, 1994, Hulk Hogan fought Ric Flair for the first time on pay-per-view. Hogan beat Flair and held up the world title in victory. He held up the WCW World Heavyweight title. Flair was WWF champion at Mania 8. Hogan was at Mania 8. That should have been the title that Hogan held up. That piece of wrestling history. I understand why the steroid scandal was heating up. Hogan had made himself the poster child of the scandal after a disastrous appearance on the Arsenio Hall show a few months earlier. Having Hogan as champion wouldn't have been great, but like they still booked him at Mania 8. They still booked him in the main event. They still sold the show on the back of Hulk Hogan. They should have just booked Flair versus Hogan. And speaking of Hulk Hogan, number eight, just all of 1993. Just all of it. Only one good thing happened with the WWE Championship in 1993, and that was Razor Ramon versus Bret Hart at the Rumble. Then came badness. Brett lost a strap to Yokozuna at Mania 9 in a relatively bad main event before Hulk Hogan, returning after his time in the steroid wilderness, won it in a random and insulting bit of booking, basically cashing in without a briefcase after the main event of Mania, you know, like Big Show did at Mania 36. Sorry, Brett. The sorry Bretts would then intensify as Hogan didn't defend the belt for two and a half months before losing it back to Yoko at King of the Ring via a nefarious cameraman because he didn't want to drop it to too small Bret Hart. Then Lex Luger didn't get over as Hulk Hogan replacement after the Holster left for Hollywood, meaning that Luger didn't win the strap as planned at SummerSlam 93, instead winning by countout and still celebrating, making the championship feel like nothing at all. And then the belt was only defended on TV three times for the rest of the year, twice ending in a DQ, and the only clean retention was over, checks notes, Dan Dubiel on Raw. Do you remember him? What a year. Almost an entire 12 months of the top title feeling like either an afterthought or a pawn in the ego games of the soon-to-be-departed Hulkster. But Yoko wasn't the worst WWE champion of the 90s. That would be number seven, Diesel Power. You would just be amazed at the amount of people who would not pay to see WWF champion Diesel in 1995. Behind the steroid trial, 1995 is the closest WWE came to going out of business. Just a dismal year of ticket sales that forced the company to actually reduce the number of house shows it ran because it was costing them too much to do so. And house shows are supposed to be one of the company's biggest money makers. Consequence free but fun, untelevised shows normally headlined by the WWF championship. Except WWF had, in an effort to whack the belt on the tallest guy they could find, given it to Diesel. Would business have improved if they kept the title on Bob Backlund or Bret Hart or if they put on Owen instead? Undertaker, maybe. But 1995 was just such a bad year, it was hard to say. Like, Diesel wasn't just a problem by himself. It seems cruel to lump it all on him. Sure, he was slow and undynamic in the ring, but oh boy, there's a bunch of world champions you could say that about. The point was, the roster was so anemic, he barely had any top heels to fight, and yet WWE kept the belt on him for an entire year, despite an entire year of it not working. I will simply never 
forgive them for Diesel versus Mabel being the worst SummerSlam main event of all time, and WWE's insistence in running on Diesel power can only be deemed a massive mistake. Number six, it has looked awful for 15 years. 15 years of the WWE title looking like a party favor, it's not right. The spinning belt is the easier target and has been the water is wet of wrestling criticism for the last few years. Of course it's bad, it's what you get when you ask a 60 year old man to draw what he thinks a pimpin belt would look like given two minutes and a napkin. It's supposed to look like a vanilla ice piece of crap, but when Cena gave up that gimmick, they forgot to change the belt back. But actually, looking at them side by side, God, maybe the modern version of the championship is worse. It's literally just a company logo hot glued to a piece of leather with some tacky ass gems you can get in a bajazz or teenage diary set from Target. It's just the super expensive version of some lazy design you'd expect from a local indie fed. Logo on leather, call it a day. There's no actual design here. We are light years away from the greatness of the Big Eagle. This isn't nostalgia glasses either. This looks like a belt that people would shed literal blood, sweat and tears to hold even for a single show. This looks like a corporate gift that WWE would hand out to its favourite celebrities. It is the wrestling equivalent of a f***ing business card. And now all four top titles look like this because misery shared is misery squared. It's madness. Number five, the summer of punk. Oh man, talk about a drop ball. This ball was dropped so hard it fell through the f***ing earth and started singing Old Man River. The build to Money in the Bank 2011 was amazing, partly because of this gentleman, but also partly because it had completely new, shocking, and unpredictable stakes. They made it seem like the world was coming to an end. Jesus Christ, what would happen if CM Punk left with the WWE Championship? What could possibly happen? Answer, they bring out a new belt, same as the old belt, then crown someone else. Then CM Punk comes back within the fortnight, toilet flush sound effect. WWE had a different world title right there. If only they shifted to focus on the world heavyweight title and just let the WWE Championship be stolen for a little while longer. Just a few months longer of the most interesting WWE storyline in a literal decade. Instead of taking the time to slow cook a pork shoulder, WWE just wrote the words pulled pork on a piece of paper and tried to sell that instead. And God, imagine if there was just no WWE Championship for months at a time. Oh wait, you don't have to. Number four, the WWE Championship holiday sponsored by Jimmy John's. So it's become at best a running joke and at worst a cause for fans to pop a caps lock fit whenever Brock Lesnar wins either the WWE or Universal title because he fucks off with it to go commit deer apocalypse in the Yukon. Now personally I disagree with that. I think the belt never feels more like the great achievement it should be than when it sits around the waist of Smaug Lesnar the gold hoarder but gosh it makes so many people so angry that clearly a murder has happened that I'm unaware of. I'll grant you that not having the belt around occasionally makes WWE go well. I can't see it so no point talking about it because it's a toddler with no object permanence and that can make the title feel like either an afterthought or a cynical bargaining tool in the endless contract negotiations with the world's most German man to ever not be German. Maybe that's why people are cross or maybe it's because Brock Lesnar is occasionally linked with horrendous bullshit like number three Kofi Kingston forgets how to be ambitious. Man this stings. It still really stings. Like sure especially through the lens of this year the optics are pretty bad. Smackdown moves to a proudly right wing channel and the first thing that happens is WWE's first African born WWE champion is completely destroyed by a man who looks like he could teach a course on being white at Princeton. Like gross. But the real reason this sucks is so much more than that. You can get a really good story out of being squashed. Hell when Goldberg squashed Lesnar Paul Heyman nearly died and it fueled Brock for six months. WWE weren't interested in Kofi Kingston as champ anymore though. There was Kane Velasquez to build to remember that. So as soon as he was beaten back to smiling and clapping with the New Day. Thank you very much. It was insulting to Kofi and the championship. For Kofi it removed all the agency of his character. All that drive ambition that powered Kofi Mania. It doesn't matter anymore. He'd learned his place. And for the championship wrestlers should need that belt. Steve Austin said, I need to beat you, Rock, more than anything you could ever imagine. That is the level of respect that belt used to get, whereas Kofi can't bring himself away from pancakes long enough to grieve. If wrestlers aren't shown as really wanting the belt, if it doesn't drive them, then it's just something that everyone gets a turn holding, and it doesn't matter. And to reinforce that opinion, number two, why can't the WWE Championship main event a f***ing pay-per-view? In the last three years, the WWE title, the thing that Austin sold his soul for, has headlined a pay-per-view three times, once per year. The six-pack challenge at Fastlane in 2018, the Elimination Chamber match in 2019, and Drew versus Brock at Mania 36, which, if you're paying attention, means that a singles match for the WWE Championship, which used to be the pinnacle of wrestling importance of all the shows in the last three years, has main evented a pay-per-view once. The last one before Drew versus Brock was AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal in 2017.
2019, I feel like I'm going mad. The entirety of Kofi's run took place in the mid-card. Same with 90% of AJ Styles' go. Drew only main-evented a pay-per-view when he won the belt and hasn't main-evented since. I'm recording this before Hell in a Cell, so maybe Drew has now main-evented. I don't know what more you can say. I don't know why this has happened. Why would you? The title is only as important as... Let's just... Let's just move on. And number one, Jinder sake look i've i've expended all of the energy i can on this dead hog of a title reign people just get angry with me when i say that putting the top title on a man who's never had to wrestle longer than five minutes on tv and somehow expect him to be magically a main event talent was a bad idea months months of exactly the same match from jinder clumsy back and forth interference from his tiny friends collapse victory the idea that shinsuke nakamura can beat kota Ibushi in the tokyo dome but can't overcome jinder mahal and his two sons it needs cap knacks momentum and before anyone says anything yes drew mcintyre was in 3mb as well but he went from enhancement talent to the indie circuit where he was already an established main event and went through a boot camp circuit of icw impact hell wcpw constantly training himself to have these 20 minute main event matches to be the man to carry the big belt so that when he came back he was built for the title. Jinder, through no fault of his own, was plucked from obscurity because of his ethnicity, was told, you're the man now, dog, and that's it. Fans still claim that it was a good thing because it was unexpected, unique, and produced genuine anger, but so does a f***ing bear attack, and I really can't go through the differences between actual heel heat and the I don't want to watch this product despair felt by fans when the WWE Championship match was reliably the worst match on the pay-per-view every single time. And... I'm sad now. And that's our list. What are your least favorite uses of the WWE Championship? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share this video around and subscribe to WrestleTalk for more news and lists. And never forget to jam that jam.